Everything that I am today and everything that I do is based on what I've been through, especially for the last 10 years. Because before that, I'm 30 today, so I will be 30, 31 in 14 days. Before that, my first 20 years of my life were absolutely wonderful. I was raised by wonderful parents. They gave me so much love and they taught me what, what's important in life. I was able to travel a lot. Um, I was very active. I was playing piano. I was very active in sports as well. I was playing tennis. And all of that opened many, many doors for me. So right after high school that I finished here in Ljubljana, I decided, actually I was invited to go study to the United States on a full athletic scholarship. So I came to California when I was 18 with a full scholarship, everything in front of me, and I was just feeling so lucky, you know. Um, I said to myself, what can even go wrong? You know, I thought, everything is perfect. I'm the top of my life. I'm 18, and I have so much more to give. Well, 10 years ago, when I was 20, all this had a little scary end. Um, something happened to me that was definitely my first turning point in my life and completely changed me. And I can see and feel that very, very strongly today. Since I was so active and involved in everything that I do in life, I didn't have much time like my colleagues maybe had, you know, for partying, for going out, for boys, for flirting and all of that. So when I was 20, I got my first boyfriend. He was also very involved in, in basketball. He was on a national team. And uh, he was my first love, the first guy I went, you know, down to Ljubljana holding hands. And uh, we were together also when I went to the United States, even though, uh, you know, I knew it was, it was a big challenge since I was so young, if this is going to last or not. But destiny took its own way. So one day when I called my father home, I said, you know, how are you, Dad? And he said, you know, Anna, everything is fine. We were just having a casual conversation. But I felt immediately that something was wrong. And I think like 10 minutes later, he told me that my boyfriend died instantly in a car crash. We were both 20 at that time. So I can honestly tell you, um, you know, it's very, very interesting because today I have to zoom to present right now because today his father passed away. It was really hard. I just found out hours before I came here. So I have to zoom back now to the past. Uh, when my dad told me, my, my whole world collapsed. You know, nobody really could understand me. I was half of the world away. I was by myself. I had friends there, but they didn't really understand me because nobody really knew me truly who I am. So I got really depressed. I was very down. Um, I was emotionally completely broken. I didn't know what to do. I lost faith in life, which I had so much before, you know, because I thought nothing could happen to me. Uh, and that's when it started. I got really, really depressed. I got down. I flunked out of the college for, for one semester. I took a break. But I was playing tennis. This is what kept me going. And, you know, through this couple of months, I realized, you know, this is not Anna. I can't always be like that. This is not something that I'm supposed to be here. So I somehow stood up, finished my college with very good grades. I came back to Slovenia. Um, I still wasn't being myself. I was still trying to find my way. I came here, did my master's in a year and a half, really easy, because, you know, every time I, I put something in my head, I already realize it, then it's just a matter of operative work. So I finished my master's with a 10. Good job, Anna. I'm not so proud of that today, because I'm much more proud of what I feel and what I do currently. Uh, and then I got a job, which was very, very good, um, for two years in a huge pharmaceutical company, very good experience. But after two years, I realized, you know, it, this is not making me happy. This is not me. And I was put in a little box. I couldn't really think with my own thoughts, with my own ideas. So I quit. And everybody asked me, do you have a backup plan? And I said, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I did a few things in between. And then I met some people from abroad, actually from Switzerland and from Liechtenstein. And I saw a huge opportunity in solar energy that was very, very evolving. In, um, in Slovenia in 2009. So I agreed with them to open a daughter company in Slovenia, develop a huge business development project, which would be the biggest if it would succeed in solar energy in Europe. And I devoted seriously my entire 12 months, one year to this project, evolving a lot of, lot of companies from here, Unicredit Bank, Lawyers, Ernst & Young, quality control management team from California, from 
Germany, it was really, really huge. And after 12 months, the investor, so my mother company, told me they don't have any money to invest. So the entire project flunked into the water. And actually, every, all the costs that occurred were left to me, so I paid for everything. And you know, I can say easily today, because of this project, I have a loan, um, and I was really, really disappointed. So this was another huge disappointment in my life, uh, because I really devoted so much of me, and I failed one more time, and I was just really left without any words. I mean, what else can happen to me? And um, when I was going through all of that, you know, I realized there must be something good about that. There must, be, there must be a way that I have to find. And I stood up again, and again, something else hit me. Because a couple of months later, another, I can't say tragedy, but something that really bad uh, affected our family. My mom, which was 67 at the time, was diagnosed with a very rare dementia disease. It's not Alzheimer's, but it's frontotemporal dementia, and there's no cure for it. So for the last two years, let's say my mom doesn't really remember who I am. She maybe just knows 20% of my time, who's my father, who's my sister, and me. So we've been trying to be, you know, very strong and supportive about that. So many, many things happened to us, and all of that, you know, through these last 10 years, evolved and awakened me to become who I really am today. And I realized, you know, that you have to live a raw life. That's how I call it. You need to go through a raw life. You need to experience especially the bad things and embrace them with open arms to fully understand who you are and to really, really find your inner morals, your values, your truth, and your honesty. And what kept me going for the last 10 years was a strong feeling that I couldn't describe years, years ago, but I could finally put it into words a year and a half ago. I was running and I said, this is it. This is why I'm here. This is who I am. And it's called Truhoma. So this was my, my engine. This was my soul. This is how I survived everything until today. And this is what kept me going. It's the belief in me, in totally, honestly, let's say, saying to all of you, you know, this is what you get. No hidden motives, just truly and honestly me. And I will tell you what Truhoma means. It's a very strong word and statement. And it's applied to three basic things in life, true and honest marketing. Because today I have two companies that I started on my own. I'm not dependent on anybody. We're very innovative, you know, and we are just starting for the last two years. It's really hard, but I'm scoring for the long term because I believe if we're going to be true and honest in what we do, you know, we will be the winners in the end. So this is what I apply in my work through true and honest marketing. If we go further on, true and honest management, it's another second important thing in companies. You have to have true and honest people, HR, and everybody that relates and coexists in the company and creates a successful business story. But the bottom line of everything that we all are, and I truly believe that we all are, is true and honest mankind, which means that we are truly and honestly in sync with ourselves in what we do and in what we believe. And that's what kept me going through the least past 10 years, and that's what's keeping me going now. And I will show you a great, perfect example that shines, and it's totally, how can I say, um, describing the true and honest mankind and the tr true Homa movement. This is my charity that I also do, um, only in my spare time, and it's called Anina Zvezdica. The whole, the whole concept of Anina Zvezdica is basically to collect unperishable food for people that are socially disadvantaged. So first of all, through Anina Zvezdica, I and my team, because we are the team now, want to prove that you don't need any money, no money. I mean, if you see from my example, I'm not on zero. I have a loan from before because of my business fiasco from two years ago. So you don't need any money. You need time and you need your devotion and it has to be 100%. So that's what we're proving with Anina Zvezdica. Second thing that is also very important and one of the main motives is, as I mentioned earlier, is to help people in need. But the third motive, which I think is the most important, is to bring all the people together and to show that if we all have true and honest mind, we can do something seriously miraculous here on Earth. And I think this is, this is what's been missing for the last years, 
especially when this um, you know, materialistic phenomena was here. And you know, on one side, honestly, I'm very, very grateful that we have this crisis here now because it's finally awakening us and truly showing what's important in life. And I think with Anina Zvezdica, this is what we've been proving for the last three years. And it, the way it started was, was really funny. I've always known for all my life I want to help. It was just a matter of time when to start because I seriously now trust everything has to happen with a reason and very spontaneously. So in January, it will be three years since my first action was going on. Uh, for my birthday, I said, I don't want any presents. I don't need anything, you know. I just want my friends to come and bring some food. So I wrote them a little note, a little invitation saying, come, bring some fruit from your closets. You don't have to buy anything. So we can, you know, hang out, chat, and let's see what we will do. So everybody loved my idea so much that in the end, we made 37 happy families. It was a great feeling. But the problem was, I didn't know any of these families. So at that point, I connected with a social um, society in Shishka, Ljubljana, that helped me to find these people. And I said, you know, I really want them to have kids. And they said, okay, no problem. So every time I bring food to them, I meet them, I want to talk to them. It's not like I give them the box and say bye. Why do I want to talk with them? Because the fourth motive of Ani Zvezdica is maybe to change their lives. So I ask them, what is your problem? Why are you in this situation? What is the solution? What are you going to do? So the most re rewarding thing for me is an example from last year when a family came to get food, but this year they came and they brought food. So they changed their life story. You know, I want to inspire them and motivate them to change something for themselves as well. The second charity action took place in April 2010, sorry, 2011. And we seriously, I made a website and I said to my friends, can you please invite your friends? And we expanded a little bit and in the end, we made 105 happy families. And the feeling was so great because at that time I realized this is a good idea because people started to believe in my organization because there was no euro transferred to the account, everything was just seen in food. And at that moment, for the third charity action, a lot of companies said, hey, I want to be a part of this too. So there were two channels with cooperation with companies. One was that companies that produce food donated food, and the other one was in such a way that they involved employees, and employees started, let's say in a week or two weeks, gathering food in their company, and then they brought it to me. Furthermore, which is also most rewarding for me, kindergartens, elementary schools, high schools, faculties, join me. And when I see little kids, and when I see that they are aware of what's going on in their lives, that there is poverty, and that there are hungry kids around them, that's like education for me for them. You know, and it's very, very important that they know what's happening at this young age. So last year, we made 523 happy families, and it was just great. And you know, many people ask me, Anna, you have such a great PR. How can you do that? And I say, I don't have any PR. All the media is contacting me by themselves. And why do they do that? Because they believe in this story as well. They want to be a part. And you know, media is also tired of only talking about bad things. They want to share the good things, finally. So it's awakening for them as well. This year in April, we made another progress. We made 700 happy families. So this was even bigger, let's say, log logistical, logistical and organizational project. So more volunteers, I call them little stars, joined my project, and we're all really fully devoted. And now, you know, my fifth action is just finished. Well, it's not because I have a lot of work. Today is, I think, after two months, uh, one day I have a day off. Before I was just working, you know, in the morning I have my, my job. Um, I'm also a speaker. And then in my free time, which is totally devoted to Anina Zvezdica, this is what I do because this is what I love. And among with my little stars, this is what we achieved now. We have more than 100 people involved that helped. We have more than 50 educational institutions that took part. We have more than 19 Slovenia companies that took part. And most of all, I don't even know if this, this figure is all right, because I think uh, when I see the food now, it's, I think, more than 40 tons. I think we will make more than 2,500 happy families before New Year's. My goal is to, you know, share the food with them 
by December 28th, and I hope seriously to do that. And thank you. Many, many people ask me, you know, Anna, why do you do so many things? And I say, they just end up in a, such a beautiful mosaic, all them together, and I learn from it, and I learn from myself, and it's just something so beautiful, and I want to share this with everybody, and today I know why I'm here. I want to inspire everybody to change the world, to make it better, and most of all, I want to connect people. And I think with Anina Zvezdica, I've proven this. And I want to share this, you know, on other fields as, as well. And why do I want to do this? Because I strongly and unconditionally believe that everybody, each and every single person in this world, is seriously true and honest mankind. We're all true Homa. Thank you.